Hello everyone and welcome back to another Let's Create A and this time it's a Samhain page. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, forget Christmas. This is the best time of the year, right here. Good old Samhain, love it. Now you're probably thinking already, and I'm going to address it before we even start, why is this video so very long? I, I, I swear I didn't mean to make it this long. I'm so sorry. I'm new to this. Come on, give me a break. I'm, I'm, I'm not good at this. I'm, I'm new here. The, 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 unedited, the unedited clips, when I put them all together, five hours long. Not even joking, five hours of footage. And that's because this project right here, this took me so long because A, I was not very well during the making of it. And then B, it turned out being a much bigger project than I thought it would be. And then C, I like so many things went wrong during trying to make this that I ended up having to split it up into a fair few days so you'll see in the footage you'll see my outfit change you'll see my my jewelry vanishes up like towards the end it, it's not very uh, yeah <laughs> but I, I tried my best I've sped it right up so that it's as fast as I can possibly get it and yeah welcome to this video I guess I just wanted to also address what on earth is going on with all the subscribers that I'm getting. If you're new here, thank you so much for being here. It means so much to me. I'm gonna cry. Yeah, just welcome and thank you so much for subscribing. It does mean the world to me, it really does. Just me in my silly little corner of the internet, just doing my thing. And people like me enough to subscribe it's it's just wow I'm just rolling with it while it's while it's happening <laughs> anyway to the main event Samhain best Sabbath in my opinion now I might be a bit biased because I'm a witch and it's kind of the most the most witchy of all the Sabbaths and Halloween in general is just so great I love everything about Halloween. Just everything. The colours, the festivities, the fun. This is... how on earth am I going to even explain what I'm doing here? So, okay, so skull. I like skulls, I like a good skull. I love skull imagery, so I definitely wanted to include that. And I wanted to make kind of like, this is supposed to be like a front page and I'm going to do stuff on the back as well. And then I'm going to have it fold out and then I'm going to have other things in the book underneath it. Like I'm telling you, it turns out to be quite cool in the end, but the process of getting to the end is nothing short of a nightmare. But yes, I started out by printing out an image of a skull and getting out my good old faithful roll-on sticky tape and then a bit of scrapbook paper from my vintage grimoire scrapbooking paper set to create this thing and it looks pretty good as is you know I could have just left it like that but no no of course I didn't this page that you see right here, it ends up changing so many times throughout that it's actually quite ridiculous. This is the kind of video, a bit like my other video, the Maybon one that I did. This is kind of a, a good one to have in the background, especially because of how long it is. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do it like that, I'm sorry. This is a good one to have in the background. Maybe have a cup of tea again. 
<laughs> like I said in the other one, grab a cup of tea, grab some biscuits, have a nice little cosy lay down and have this on in the background. Maybe you could work on your book of shadows with me yapping away in the background. It's a very have on in the background type video. So now I'm doing the title for it and how can I be that slow even though I've sped it up so fast. You can tell I wasn't quite with it because of how slow I was. So I'm not very well today either to be totally honest with you. I'm having a rough time, which is not fair because it's my favourite time of the year and yet I feel really, really bad. Right now I'm in bed. It's the middle of the day. It's like 4pm and here I am in my bedroom, in my bed, because I'm ill. Fun times. So I thought I may as well do the voiceover or at least do a bit of it while I'm just here, you know. I want to be out there having fun. But much like my Maybon page, this was m kind of, again, my way of celebrating this year. I mean, I do have another video coming up, though. I have a very special video coming up, hopefully, that I'm going to release on Samhain, hopefully. If I can keep up at this point. Yeah, here I am again with my lovely faithful friend, the silver metallic pen. I'm obsessed with it, I can't stop using it. You're gonna see it in every single thing I make, from now on to the end of time. <laughs> it's just so shiny, and I like shiny, okay? I like shiny things. So yeah, I'm decorating and adding borders and all sorts of stuff. My brand new sticker book also really came in handy for this one as well. I end up using a lot of stickers, which is really cool. Oh, speaking of which, here we are. Time to get the stickers out. Now, I'm totally improvising again. I had no plan whatsoever, apart from printing out the skull. I just had that skull head printed out and, oh, yeah, that sticker. That sticker right there. That sticker. Oh, that's the most, like, foreshadowing sticker of all time. It's a planchette that says your F word on it. And I picked it out and I just really liked that idea. Because I wasn't feeling very well. I was in a bit of a mood, I won't lie. So when I saw that sticker that said you're effed, I was like, I'm going to use that one today. It fits in well with the feels that I'm feeling. But it's so foreshadowing everything as well the chaos that is making this thing so I also, I also found I also found these cute little Harry Potter like what do you call them trinkets like jewelry little hangy thingies like metal like metal things and I found a witch hat and I thought I don't know how but I'm going to include this somehow I like to try and be inventive and as creative as possible. And yeah, this moth with a skull in it, again, I love that sort of thing. You see it all the time, don't you now? Skulls with moths on them. It's like a thing. I swear it's a thing. So I kind of just copied that. It's giving, it's giving, what's that film? What's that film? Silence of the Lambs, that one? It's giving that. <laughs> now that I've got the moth there, it's definitely giving that. So now that I've done that, I'm now trying to think about what I'm doing on the back. 
of this piece of paper. I did have this lovely like cardboard black with like gold bits running through it but unfortunately that doesn't get a look in. It would have been nice but no, I discard it. I took some of the little bits from the stuff I'd already used and I thought I may as well use them as to not waste. So I made little trims out of the bits that were left behind. I've just realised I'm going to have to talk for an hour and 40 whatever minutes long this is. <laughs> okay. <sighs> right, what am I doing now? Oh yeah, here we are. Here's the sticker book that I was on about. A very recent purchase and it's really come in handy. So I saw these four, this like set of four stickers and they're not even really anything to do with Halloween. But I just thought they'd make cool little corner pieces for this page. I keep going back to it, you see, I told you. I told you I keep going back to it. And I keep going back to it all the time. You'll see the end result is nothing like what you see now. And look, back at it again with the silver pen. I just couldn't help myself. Just had to outline the skull in silver pen. I just kept thinking, it's not right, it's not right, there's something missing, there's something missing. And I just kept going back to it. <laughs> and then I decided that the eye sockets needed something inside them as well. I went in with the gold pen, the metallic one, and unfortunately that did not work, so here we are with the silver again. I thought putting pentacles inside the eye sockets would be quite a cool idea. And it is a cool idea. It actually is a cool idea. It's just I change it later. <laughs> I change it all later. What you see now, just soak it in because you ain't seeing it again. I then do a little bit more detail at the top. I do a little triple moon symbol. Just a little bit of added flair, I think, at the top. Because yet again, I can't leave a single thing untouched. Everything must be filled with something. That is my... the way I do things. I then put a quote underneath. And I just put the veil... Uh, what did I put? The veil grows thin. For the dead, I think I put? Yes, yes I did. The veil grows thin for the dead. Because that is the thing that happens during this time of year. The veil does grow thin and that's when you can do... It's when you typically can do divination style stuff. And it's apparently a lot easier to talk to the dead this time of year. Communicate with the other side. So now I'm working on the back. And I had this really cool tissue paper. This really dark black. And look at that! Just like magic, it turns into three. I'm so confused. I have no idea how that happened. Just magic. <laughs> just as magic paper turns into three and I end up with three pieces so I'm like uh oh I'm gonna have to use these somehow and I end up with this there it is the your eft sticker and then because I have my lovely white pen I thought yeah I'm gonna look at that look how cool that is look how beautiful that looks, the white on the black. 
That's going to be so cool. Nothing's going to go wrong here. I mean, it's just black tissue paper with some lovely white pen on it. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, so yeah, here I couldn't get the sticky tape to work. You can tell by my hands that I'm very frustrated right now. I had to go old school and get some normal glue. Normal person glue. <laughs> Look at my hands! My hands, when I get angry, like, just, just watch my hands whenever I get angry, I, I, they turn into like claw hands. <laughs> I turn, my hands just go... Rawr. But yes, I, I managed to get, get these stuck down. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to not stick them down thoroughly so that they kind of were loose and just those bits. And yeah, so, so now I think I'm getting somewhere. Now I'm like, aha! It's coming together quite nicely now. I like this. I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm vibing. I'm vibing right now. And there it is. The sticker. The main sticker of the hour. And it, as you can see, takes forever for me to even get it off the thing. <laughs> Look at my hands! My hands are getting dirty now. And I'm just like, ugh. But there you go. There you go. And then I'm suddenly I'm like I'm proud and I'm like, yes! Look at that, we're getting somewhere. Finally. Now it's looking like something that is completely intentional and not improvised anymore. I know exactly what I'm doing, I promise. Right, now what do I do? I'm assuming. Yep, yeah, there we go. In we go with the white pen, ready to write all about Samhain. And write about all the stuff that it's to do with. I kind of half took a passage that I found online, but then also made it my own as well. So it's kind of half someone else's and then half mine as well. Back at it again with my swirly curly whirly writing. Take note of my lovely green jumper because that disappears at one point as well. Good job I don't lie on my videos and say that I did it all in one sitting and that I'm all perfect. because continuity is not a thing in this video. Then I decide to add another one, another sticker, and this is a lovely black cat. I'm not actually a fan of cats. <laughs> Sorry, random fact. But yeah, I'm not really a fan of cats. Here, oh, here's the start of it. Here's the start of the downfall. The pen not working. But it's okay, I get it to work a little bit longer. And I'm just like, it'll be fine. And then it sort of stops working and then I'm like, um, please work. Hello. Like, pen? Pen? Please, pen. Please work. Pen. <laughs> get another bit of paper. And I'm just like, oh, oh no, oh no. You're the only pen I have. Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my hands! Ah, oh, I'm getting so mad. I'm like, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. You're the only white pen I have. You're gonna do this to me. And then I get another thing and I start writing on it. I even write on my own hand because I'm desperate at this point. <laughs> I'm desperate. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, no, I've just filmed all of this. Are you kidding me? And I give up. I give up. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Sorry. That's my cat stress ball. <laughs> it's 
sorry. That is my cat stress ball that I squeezed the life out of just now. And yes, my poor mum had to go out and buy two new white pens and also buy me some black paper as well. <laughs> my poor mum. My poor mum. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Ah. Ugh. Sorry, that made me laugh. Seeing my myself break down in in super fast speed was <laughs> so funny. Anyway, so yeah, I'm like, there's no way I'm writing on this tissue paper because that's clearly not going well with the white pens. So yeah, my poor mum had to buy two fresh white pens and also get some black paper for me. And then I didn't want to completely destroy what I'd already done, so I just kind of tried to copy what I did and stick this black paper over the top, but leave a bit of the tissue paper out. So we're kind of layering. It's layer on layer on layer. It's like an onion. It's like the Shrek onion analogy. So yeah, here we go. Stick this on. And it's like it never happened. Was that a quick thumbs up I just gave the camera as well there? Ugh. So now I have a new idea as well. As I do this, I kind of realise that I want this to be a full page spread instead of what I was originally doing. Which was like I was going to write just on one half of it and then write something on the other half. But then seeing it, look at my claw hat, look at my, <laughs> my stressed ball cat came out again. Um, <laughs> I don't know what went wrong, but it, it needed the stressed ball to come out. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so uh, it was going to be one page and then I was going to do something on the other side totally different. But then doing this and then seeing it all in one, it made me think, no, I'm going to do a full page spread and make this whole thing into just one page. So now I'm thinking I'm gonna try and make the other side match. So I get some pumpkins, some jack-o'-lanterns. Very Halloween, very Samhain. Very, very on board with this time of year. Perfect. I get some pumpkins and I get a spider. I am so terrified of spiders, I can't even tell you. I didn't even like touching that sticker because of it being a spider, but I thought, I thought Halloween, spider. <laughs> and I do like the symbology. The symbology? Is that a word? Symbology? Symbolism, that's the word I was looking for. The symbolism of spiders. I do like spiders for that reason, but if you see one in real life, if I see one, no, nope, no, nope, running a mile. So now I can start again. Back in with the new white pen. And I can write a double page of information. Still the same thing I was writing before. A little bit of someone else's and a little bit of mine, all mixed in together. What can I talk about while I do all this? <laughs> oh yeah, look, look, my, uh, my outfit's changed. I totally missed that. My outfit's changed. Look, I'm now wearing a sparkly blue jumper. That's because it took about a day to get my my poor mother to go out and and get me some new pens and some new stuff so I could continue. I won't lie. Like when when the pen broke and when when I was like panicking because it's the only pen I had. I, I I shed a tear. I shed a tear. I did. I had a little cry over it. I'm, I'm sensitive like that, you know? <laughs> I did. I had a good cry. I needed a good cry that day. 
and you know when one little thing just tips you over the edge that was it that was it for me that was the straw that broke the camel's back as they say but I'm glad in a way it was a happy accident in the end because it turned out to be better than what I planned so so it was a good accident in the end I guess I could do what I did with the uh this is like a podcast again isn't it I may as well just do a podcast at this point just hours and hours of me rambling about stuff yeah like like I did in the last Maybon page thingy while I was busy writing away in the background I was able to say a few things so yeah my book of shadows tour video that is getting ridiculous amounts of views it just keeps going up and up and up and I absolutely blame that video for the new subscribers it's definitely the witchcraft community that are coming in and saying hello so that just makes me want to do more witchcraft stuff because I love showing people things that I make and that I have and all that I think it'll be really fun so like I said in the last video altar tour definitely I was I was even thinking of doing a tarot and oracle deck tour possibly I think that might be a cool idea because I've seen people do that as well so I thought I might copy that as well <laughs> and maybe do like reviews some little reviews of my tarot decks and oracle decks and talk about why some of them are my favorites to work with and others are not so much and all that stuff I have a top secret Samhain special video coming up which I can't really give away much info because it's top secret might be the best thing I've ever done might be the most stupid thing I've ever done and that's all I can tell you on that <laughs> I'll just let you listen to the pretty music while this is happening give myself a breather <laughs> awkward silence nobody likes awkward silence what else can I talk about oh yeah gaming stuff I do like my gaming stuff I don't know how many people are witches and gamers because uh, witch gamers you are my target audience <laughs> I have a niche I have a particular audience that I wish to have I need actually even more specific if you can please be a chronically ill gaming witch that would be fantastic thank you if you are a chronically ill gaming witch then you are my new best friend and I make content for you <laughs> I have loads of things planned for gaming I've got my Skyrim thing going on I've got my Minecraft thing going on I've got loads of ideas with Minecraft I've just started doing the Harry Potter uh, map on Minecraft that flu network one that's like really cool and yeah that's that's gonna be fun I'm also thinking about getting myself a new, instead of having a laptop, I'm going to have a PC, a gaming PC. So that's going to be great. Hopefully it'll improve the quality of my content. Because there's only so much I can do right now on my laptop without it literally burning the house down. <laughs> Anyway, it looks like I'm sort of coming to the end of this, this very long, very long chapter. 
I definitely think it took me way longer because I wasn't feeling very well. It was just unfortunate that I wanted to do this for this time of year, but I've felt really bad recently. Ugh, such a shame. My illness is very unpredictable, so my content's going to reflect that, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm coming to the end. <laughs> My tappy tappy fingers are funny when they're going so fast. My fingers are always tapping. But things are going smoother now. This is a much more chill, a much more relaxed experience now. It still goes very wrong. It, like we're not out of the woods yet, but like at least this was a little bit of a a time of relaxing, and I could actually do what I wanted with nothing going wrong. There we go. And then I had these gold leaves just randomly in all my craft stuff, and I just thought they looked kind of cool tucked in there, a bit of three D. So I went in with the glue because I, I knew that this sticky tape one would just like destroy these leaves. So a bit of glue and then slide those leaves in and voila! Just like that, the page is done and it looks cool. Oh, 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 forgive me. No, forgive me. It's never done until the silver pen comes out again. Oh, God. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, with a silver pen. Right, now it's... Oh, oh, no, no, it's not. No, gold pen didn't work. Okay, so now what? Back in with the white. I'm decorating the decoration, that's how, that's just how I roll apparently. I decorate the decorations. But there you go, look at that. That page was so cool. Oh, and I completely forgot, I stamped. I use stamps for the first time. So I had this uh, lovely white lovely white stamp and then I had this little autumn leaf and I just went crazy and stamped because enough is never enough you know ended up being really cool and now I think I can say this page is done Yeah, I love that page. This page is way better than the other side. <laughs> Speaking of which... Oh yes, I remember now. So, those blank spaces on the left and the right, I thought to myself, there's something missing and I have to add something. And then I thought, a bit like my Maybon page incident where I suddenly went, hang on a minute, there's no apples. Why didn't I include apples in the Maybon page? Same thing happens here. I'm like, why did I not include pumpkins? Pumpkins on the main page. And so I get my paints out again. And I thought because my Maybon page had painting in it, I may as well do the same thing here and do some nice pumpkins. I actually really love how these ones turned out. To say that I'm not a painter, you know, like I actually don't particularly like painting either. I think I did pretty well considering. Look at me mixing my colours like a professional. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I remember what happened. Hang on. Did I swap the paper because the paint didn't work on the black? Is that yet another thing that went wrong? I think it is. It is, it is, yeah. I bet I was fuming for that time where it was just nothing. I bet I was just walking around my room going, Oh my lordy. Right, so I come back in with brown paper that you can actually see the colours on. <laughs> I told you it's uh, it was it was chaotic. It was not easy. It was it was not relaxing. It was enjoyable though, apart from my little mini breakdowns. It was enjoyable. Or else I wouldn't have done it, you know? So yeah, here I'm mixing in some red, orange and yellows. And I make two sets of pumpkins. One of those normal shaped pumpkins and then one of those like longer stretched out ones. It looks more like a squash. Never mind, it's fine. But as I was saying, for someone who's not a fan of painting and is not really... I've not really ever done painting very much. They turn out really well. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna let you watch this for a bit. <laughs> just listen to the creepy music in the background. Getting the vibe. I'm back again hello totally didn't leave and then go to sleep and then come back the next day and do this again right so I got this weird obsession with this uh, <laughs> I was like gonna throw that away but it turned into a really cool looking print so that's gonna return later something possessed me to use that again so now I've got my pumpkins and now I've got this, and I don't know what, why, why, just why, why, what, what possessed me to do that? Honestly, it was like a random moment of just pure delusion. <laughs> I think I was desperate to just add colour into it, which is not like me at all. I wanted, I like, I don't know why I did that. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I, you can tell where I was going with it. It's kind of got that nice burst of random colour in it now, which is alright, but I change that later. <laughs> so right, now I've got my black, my special black pen, just like the white pens, but it's black this time. And then I go and do little outlines just to, you know, give the pumpkins some definition. You can tell this runs out too as well, look. It's like everything's just going wrong still all the time. But look at these cute pumpkins. Look at them. They're so cute. I think I did a good job. They turned out way better than I thought they would. With the little green leaves on them and stuff. And yeah, like, I really roughly do, like, the outline. 
it's like I'm, I'm I'm purposely trying not to be neat because things in my opinion look better when they're not as neat and tidy so I do a bit of highlight with my brand new white pen now that I've got <laughs> a new white pen I can finally go crazy with the white and look at those adorable and then I get to use my gold metallic pen to do a little bit of definition again a bit of shadow it's a little bit of gold and then I erase all of the pencil bits I let it dry and then I get to rip in because like I said in my last video one of my favorite things to do one of my best techniques is to just rip the paper instead of cut things out neatly it's like it just looks so much better in my opinion when it's just really roughly really roughly just ripped up like that it makes it look more scrapbook gives it more scrapbook vibe and an old look about it and there two things to cover up those empty spaces even though they're not empty I can't help it I just have to keep coming back to this page to make it more and more and more and just add more but I do really like the pumpkins I think that was a, a good choice I automatically started liking this page more when I added those pumpkins. So there's the back and there's the front. <laughs> and then I decide to fill in the triple moon at the top and make that totally black instead of what it was before. So it stands out. And I keep thinking it's the end but it's just not so I decide that the quote that I put underneath it isn't good enough as in I like the quote but I don't like that you can't really see it very well on the skull so I get a bit of scrap extra paper that I had just randomly had it out anyway so I just grabbed it it's got like a spider web thing going on which was cool and I wanted to write the quote out again in white just to make it stand out better and there we go There we go, so I write with the white pen The veil grows thin for the dead And you can see it's much more cooler looking Stands out a lot more Yep Looking good apart from the giant smudge of paint in the center that's there for no reason whatsoever <laughs> right so now i have to figure out how to put this inside of the book because i want the page to be loose so that you can see both sides so i come in with a hole puncher and I punch two holes on the top one of the holes is for this trinket little dangly witch hat I told you we would see that again <laughs> so I grabbed my mum's sewing kit got a bit of string a bit of black string and then went ahead and attached the witch hat to the right hand hole punch hole it's been a while since I've threaded a needle I 
I like interactive things in this book. I've started to realise like I'm adding loads of like fold out stuff, things that you can take out, add in, things you can just sort of interact with. Kind of reminds me of a of a children's book in a way where you've got all these like little bits and bats that you can open up and close up and yeah. So this is me just neatening it all up. And there you have it. Little dangly witch hat. It also serves as like a bookmark as well because it kind of hangs out of the book. So whenever I want to go to my favourite time of the year, all I have to do is look for the witch hat. Right, and so... I then very poorly attempt to hole punch this piece of the book and then it's not really the correct place but at this point I'm done. I'm fed up so, so I just roll with it how it is. Right so this is what I end up with. I have like a drawing pin, like a uh, is that what you call them? Maybe I, f I don't know. I've forgotten the name. I'm blank. My brain's gone blank. Like this pin thing. This like clip pin thingy thingy majiggin. And that holds the page into the book. I realised that the sticker was kind of coming apart and bits were falling off of it, which was a bit annoying. So I just came back and glued some of those things back in, make them more secure. The stickers are really good, they're just not the best quality, so they were kind of falling apart a bit, which was a bit annoying, but it's fine. Now these are like protective stickers for hole punch holes, just to make them not break and because like, I don't want the paper to start ripping and all that. So they come in really handy. I had a few left over from my old book of shadows. So I used those to secure the page. Otherwise, it would just pull it, you see? Like, over time it would just pull and then eventually rip. So this just helps prevent damage. I've forgotten what they're called, but they're, they're very handy. I recommend those if you ever do stuff like this with hole punched paper. So yeah, here's me putting the pin in and the page in, and there we have it. We have our loose sort of main page. And you can kind of, as you see here, I'm just demonstrating how it opens up like that with the dangly witch hat and now I've got to start thinking about what to do underneath in the actual book because yeah there's more oh and there's even more look I can't I can't stop messing with this front page so I come in and I'm like, I don't like the pentacle eyes, so I'm going to replace them with some more random scrapbooking stuff. I don't even know what those symbols mean. So let's hope I've not accidentally cursed myself. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it at this point. And I think I've decided... Oh no, I haven't. I haven't, I totally forgot, I added even more to this. I started adding symbols. I think that was inspired by the, the eyes that I just did. So I started looking up like different symbols to represent Samhain. And this time of year, and then I just added those in for extra. Just extra, extra, extra. Off the top of my head, I can't remember for the life of me what these symbols are. 
I just know that they represent Samhain in some way, shape or form. The spiral symbol, I've seen that a lot actually before. And then I think I did some runes as well, some rune symbols to represent this time of year. So it's beginning to be a bit of a chaotic front page. Organised chaos as I call it. My excuse every time. It's fine, it's just organised chaos. My little, my hands are symbolising that I'm done with this. But I wasn't. No, I came back. I was like, nope. That, that smudge that I did with the paint, I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like the skull. And I wanted the skull to be white. So... I don't know why I do this to myself. But I came back in with white acrylic paint and I started painting the skull white. Yep. I can I can hear you all right now, anyone who's still here. If you're still here, thank you. Like seriously, thank you. You're my new best friend. If you've managed to watch this and actually remain interested, I I love you. So yeah, I came back with white acrylic paint and I had to painstakingly, tediously paint in the white skull. So then, finally, because I've cut ahead in time, there is the finished product for the front. The white skull has been painted in, I added uh, nose holes defined them off a little bit more and that's it for that I think. Now we get to actually do the the book itself on the inside at last. Finally I'm content with those pages at the start there. Woof! Took me a while. Right so now now we can get to the good stuff because this is this is the good stuff. Yeah, this piece of paper comes back and unfortunately does not get used. I think about using the tissue again, but then I get a bit of um, PTSD from earlier and I'm like, nope. <laughs> it's because I'm improvising, like totally improvising. So I just do not know what I'm doing. I'm obviously thinking about using this somehow, but then I swear I, I discard this, I don't use it. Part of me is trying to think of a layout, you see, for what the inside's going to be. I end up making a fold out thing again. Using my special scissors to cut it into a pretty shape. And then I'm going to cut this bit off so that it's just on that one page. But then I suddenly think that's kind of cool that it folds out like that. So I decide to keep it like that. So it folds like that and I have extra space for even more information or even more artwork if I want to. And I end up seeing this thing with the skeletons on them. And I think that would make a really cool tab. Like a little tab on the side where you open and close it. So I get these two bits out and I actually use this other bit as well. Seeing as I'd already cut that out as well, I ended up using that. So 
yeah, there's me attaching it. And it's the perfect fit as well. It's like it was made for it. This whole Samhain project ended up being quite sort of death themed. Yeah, it just had an element of, of death. <laughs> A bit morbid, I know, but it's just how it happens. It is the time of the year where all the spirits are about, so it, it kind of makes sense that it ended up being that. So now I'm looking for a title thing again, something that I can put a title on. And I see this cute thing, so I grab that. It's kind of got a greenish tint to it, this one. Don't know if the camera picks that up very well. So the idea I had for this first bit of the page was to have some sort of poem because I love myself a good poem. So I'll stick the label on, ready for the title of the poem. And it ends up being a poem, basically a poem called Death. Now I've forgotten who it's by, but I did write down who it's by. I'm in bed currently again, so I haven't got my book with me. But it was by... Clarence... can't quite read it. Clarence... F... something. We'll see it when the black pen decides to work. Look at that! Again with the black pen. My pens just did not want to cooperate with me. Right, yes, so death. And who's it by? It is by Clarence E. Flynn. Clarence E. Flynn. Again, I found this on Pinterest, my favourite place to go for inspiration and quotes and poems and stories. And my white pen fails. My new white pen completely fails on me. For some reason it's all like washed out and grey now instead of white and I have no idea why. I slowly lose the will to live. I get my second new pen and thankfully this one works. <laughs> and I start with my curly whirly, twirly whirly handwriting again to write down this cute poem. Is cute the right word for a poem about death? I don't know. To me it's cute. I'm strange like that. And then after writing that, yes I am cutting out large chunks of this now because it's getting ridiculous. After doing the poem, I then get my trusty metallic silver pen back out. Of course I do. And I make this cute border around it which actually makes it ten times better. But then again, there's nothing that the silver pen can do that won't destroy anything like it. It's the perfect pen. I love it. Back to the sticker book. Because enough is never enough. And I found this um, clock. I found the clock sticker and I was like, you know, death, time, sort of, you know, time's ticking, that kind of vibe. So I was like, that's going to work well. going to put that on there. Love it. And then I went back because I thought, nope, it's still not enough. And then I found a key sticker that kind of matches this sort of old-fashioned look now that it's got. 
And then I think, yep, I got another one. Little old looking butterfly. Really complements it. Really works. Very good. Well done, me. So there we are, we got the first page of this fold out leaflet thing. <laughs> first first page done. Now we've got to do the all the inside. So let's do that next. So next up, I do a page that's about some stuff that I do for Samhain. So it's kind of like a bit, it's a bit more of a, of a useful page this time. I couldn't help myself here though, I had to write yet another quote and I just saw it out the corner of my eye. Like I already had Pinterest up on my iPad at the other side and I just saw it and it really hit a nerve. It just really, really hit a nerve with me and I had to include it. So I'm really sorry if you're a Christian, okay? I'm really sorry. This is, I have nothing against Christianity, I promise. Just the quote really grabbed my attention because, you know, me and God, we have a strange relationship. You know, we've got some beef between us that needs sorting out. So this quote here is, if I can remember it correctly, I think it was, uh, I'll wait until I've written it, then I can see it. <laughs> I will face God and walk backwards straight into hell. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry, any Christians watching. That, that's nothing. It's not to do with you. It's nothing. I promise. That's just me being overly morbid for the sake of being... That's just me being dramatic. I like a good dramatic quote. Anyway. So yes, this other bit of paper. This sort of leftover paper. Because I, I was absolutely fed up with my white pens now after all of that. So I thought, instead of writing on the black, which I was going to do, I used this other bit of paper that I had spare, just sat next to me. And for this page, I decided I wanted to write about a very specific thing that I like to do on Samhain or near Samhain. I think it's a really a really beautiful tradition, so it's one that I've adopted myself. It's um, it's called a dumb supper. If you've never heard of it before, I know it has a really weird name, a dumb supper. And basically, what that is, is it's to honour your ancestors, and it's also to honour the dead, and it's also to honour anyone who's passed away in your family, and you basically just have a feast or you eat a meal and you set some aside for them as well and you eat food with your ancestors basically and I just think it's a really really interesting and really cool way to celebrate death and so here I devote an entire page to writing all about that. I got a really cool title there. And then I remember seeing a sticker in this book while I've been looking in it so many times. I definitely remembered seeing some kind of spooky, kind of spooky, kind of random pictures of just old families, like actual photographs. So I searched and I searched because I knew it was in there and I found it. It was right here. Just this very random picture of a random family. And I thought that was just the most perfect, just perfect for that exact thing. And it fits perfectly as well. Again, it was like it was made for it. And then this is me writing all about what a dumb supper is. 
anyone who um, finds this book in the future, like, <laughs> I'm picturing in my head right now, right? Like, I'm dead, I'm long gone, and then this random book that I've made is just in the attic somewhere, and then some random some random child from another family who's moved in to my house just suddenly finds this weird book in the attic and it's this old looking this old looking thing that's got so much weird stuff written in it <laughs> and it was like something out of a film that's how i envision my book to be found one day <laughs> Yeah, cause seriously, when I'm when I'm gone, who on earth is gonna actually look at this book and keep it, or who's gonna find it and then be like, what will they think when they see it? They'll be so confused. Hopefully, another witch will find it and then they'll be they won't be confused. They'll be fine. So yeah, back to my tappy tappy fingers as always, and my curly whirly swirly writing. I tried to write this one way faster because I kind of... I was aware that time was ticking. <laughs> it kind of dawned on me and I was like, how long have I been working on this thing again? Um, I have no idea, I'd better kick up the speed just a bit. So my handwriting's not the greatest on this one, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. As long as it's swirly whirly curly writing, I don't care, I don't mind. So yeah, this page is quite simple, but effective. And I really like that random picture of that family there. Right, so now I have this other bit to fill in. So now I'm thinking, let's do some art. Let's do some artwork. Because it kind of is an art journal as well as a grimoire book of shadows. So it's a mixture of information and just art. Like I said in my last video, just yet another excuse to be creative and it's a really fun distraction for me. Gets me out of my own head and my own body, you know? Just helps. Helps me to just be doing something, anything. So I found, again on Pinterest, I found this really cute picture of a ghost and a quote. So what I did, a bit like with the writing, um, I kind of took inspiration so I didn't copy it exactly I kind of just used it as inspiration so I drew a cute little ghost on some white paper and then I ended up cutting the ghost out I learnt my mistake, you see, from the skull, because this is what I should have done with the skull at the very start. I should have just had a pure white, drawn by hand skull, and it would have been as good as this, and I'm so annoyed that I didn't do that. So I got my little ghost, and I stick that ghost down, and it already looks really good because of the white on the black. And the simplicity of it as well. This taught me how to be simple and that simple is also just as good as being chaotic. So I get my special black pen out and I trace and draw this little ghost guy that I made. And he's so cute! I love him! I don't know why it's a he, just in my head it's a he. He's so cute. <laughs> He's so cute, look at him! So I colour in his eyes. And then... <laughs> the silver pen! The silver pen is back again! 
so I did these shadows again to just add a bit more definition to him so it wasn't quite as flat so I added some shadows but I made the shadows in silver shiny pen I really oh my gosh you can see my greasy hair for a second at the bottom corner <laughs> that's the first time I've ever leaned in into the frame whoops I adore how this guy turned out. I love this page so much. You can't really see it as well on the camera, but in person, the silver shadowy effect is so cool. It's so good. So yes, I had my silvery shadows and then uh the original image that i found had like spider webs and some flowery things drawn around it um but i had this leftover ribbon with some flowers out of it some bright red flowers so i cut the flowers out and stuck those around the ghost so the the contrast of the bright red flowers and the white ghost and the black background oh my god love it <laughs> best thing i've ever done and the the uh the roses give it that 3d 3d effect and again that interactiveness of being able to like touch touch the like ribbon so it's got a really cool texture and he's, he's such a good he's such a good lad he's such a good lad he's my little ghosty boy i love him so yeah i put those down and then i write the quote that was on the original piece of artwork which i believe says um a soft spirit in a hard world because i thought that summed summed me up perfectly a soft spirit in a hard world. That's definitely how it feels most of the time. <laughs> the curse of being a sensitive empath. And the ghost, because, you know, Sow and Halloween works perfectly. I adore it. I love this little leaflet. This little leaflet is just so good. I love it. I was well happy with that. So much more happy than I was with the the skull page. Like in like so much more. Like I wish that the that bit with the ghost on is the main bit, but it isn't. But never mind. It is what it is. This is what happens when you're spontaneous and you just let your creative, intuitive side take over. So this is me placing this leaflet, sticking it in, securing it. And then just like that, the best page in the entire book. <laughs> Not that you lot have seen the book yet, but yep. There's my skull page. So I'm just figuring out what it looks like with it all together. And it now looks really, really good and I'm loving it. At this point I'm like, yes, now we're talking. Now we've got where I wanted to be. Now it's all been worth it. The struggles, the chaos, everything going wrong, it's all been worth it. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at my tappy tappy hands, just like, one page, one page left, just one page left. I'm on the home stretch. I'm on the home stretch. We're nearly there. I am so sorry, everyone, if you're still watching this. The, the amount of time this video is, I'm so sorry. 
I, I really apologise. I promise I won't make videos this long again, unless they're absolutely necessary. If you're still here, if you're still here, if you're still here, after all this time, uh, I don't know, let, let me know somehow. Tell me about, like, I don't know, go in the comments or something and say, uh, type, um, um, type, uh, pen not working. Yeah, do that. Go into the comments and type pen not working and then I'll know that you are the best person in the world. <laughs> I need to I need to know. I need to know if people survived to this point. Right, anyway, as I said, we're on the home stretch now. So now that we've got a deaf theme running and I'm sticking with it, I thought the deaf card of the tarot would be a perfect card to use as a final design. So I took an image from my favourite ever tarot deck, which is the um, Tattoo Tarot deck. So this image you can see me tracing here is the image on that card, just in black and white. So I took that and thought that would be a perfect depiction of death and this time of year. And this bit was really therapeutic, by the way. This bit, even though I was just really slowly doing it, it was it was really chill and therapeutic. All the chaos is gone now. We, it, like, we can finally chill. We can chill now. Now it's just relaxing video now. The chaos is gone. As I said earlier, I'm going to do probably a tarot deck tour and a review, so you'll see the tattoo tarot deck, and I'll tell you about why it's my favourite of all time. And I love this image, there's something about it, it's really cool. I might use this again for something else that might be coming up soon. Spoilers! I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Nothing happened. Um, no, I can't lie. Um, so yeah, I'm back again after another 24 hours because my microphone decided to break. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> I swear this, like, there's so many things going on that this video just does not want to be posted, does it? It just, just, it just doesn't want to be made. It's cursed. Where, where, where was I? Where was I? Oh yeah. <laughs> I look. My microphone literally stopped working. It just stopped working out of nowhere. And then I've tried, like, for a whole twenty-four hours. I'm, I was trying to fix it, and then I ended up ordering a new one that's coming on Wednesday. Uh, but now my old one that broke is now miraculously working again. I don't know what to do. Anyway, so yeah, this is from the Tattoo Tarot and I'm now going over it in black pen. I was going to trace it, I was going to like flip it over and then trace it into the actual book, but then by this time my hands, my arms, my neck, my back, everything was hurting, it was aching. I was just, I was, yeah, I did too much. I've sped it up again. This is uh, the most satisfying part of the entire thing and I really love this image but by this time I was so tired. I was just so tired. Totally overdid it but I had to continue because I was so close to the end. So I decided to get some special paper and I tried to get this out of the book, it was not easy. Wouldn't cooperate with me, but I got that out. And then... It was just, it just fit, thankfully, it just fit. I thought I measured it fine, but 
I was a little bit over, but it, it was fine. It fit. So yeah, I've got this other fancy, fancy paper that I really like. Again, it's way back in my, like, college art days that I get all these things from. I just have so much left over from back in those days. So now it's come in real handy. So yes, I put this lovely background paper in. So you can just see it behind the skeleton dude. So, and I, I like tracing paper actually, even though it's supposed to be for tracing things. I actually just like tracing paper as a material. Again, with like the texture stuff, I like just the texture of it and the crackling noise it makes when you touch it. A bit of ASMR. I like it a lot. So yeah, I've stuck that guy in. And it looks really cool. I thought it looked really nice. Just like my little ghost dude, I was so happy. I thought it was just like the perfect image. So now I'm starting to think, even though I like the sort of just how it is, I thought I'd add the colour in. I just I went back to colour again. It's like I think I've been like recently <laughs> Recently, like, on YouTube and TikTok, I've been watching videos about um, how people feel like Halloween isn't what it used to be anymore. And I really feel that as well. Like, Halloween, or like, all the decorations are now beige, or white, or brown. And they're like these really muted colours. It's the same for Christmas too. And it's like, do you remember when Halloween used to be a time of just bright colours? Just crazy orange, red, purple, green. And it's not like that anymore. And, and like, Christmas kind of takes over super early as well. And that really annoys me, because, like, Halloween used to be way more celebrated. And like, if I wasn't a witch now, if I didn't do witchcraft, and if I didn't see Halloween as sour now, I wouldn't be doing anything for Halloween at all. Because I can't go out partying. I can't really do that, so... I'm just glad. Like, that's yet another thing that witchcraft has kind of added into my life since getting sick. It's just added a reason to celebrate now. And to not just have Christmas and Halloween and Easter. Now for me, it's like all of the different Sabbaths throughout the entire year that I can celebrate. And I feel like it's way more meaningful as well. Like, yeah, like Halloween's not just about trick or treating and like candy and food and, you know, materialistic goods and all that. For me now, it's a... Uh, it's a time of reflection and it, it just has so much more meaning now that I've been a witch for a fair bit. So yeah, I'm painting the skeleton dude white. The, the white pen, as annoying as it's been this entire time, it, it did a good job right at the end. And it, it looked really good on the tracing paper for some reason just really stood out, worked really well. And then when I was like, ooh, this works really well, I didn't. I then decided to get my metallic pens back out. Of course I did. So I'm trying to copy the colours that are actually on the, the original artwork. So... I got my nice metallic pens out and this big like uh, scythe thing that is holding perfect for my silver pen again get that silver shiny in there <laughs> any excuse any chance I get and then the gold also got a little it got a little little bit finally the gold managed to shine 
And then I had a red pen, which I never use. I never use this pen, ever. So it was like the first time this one's had a chance to even be involved. I feel sorry for this red pen. This poor red pen left out. But not anymore. Not anymore, because now it's got this lovely red ribbon to fill in. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a very black and white, brown, beige, cream kind of person, but I definitely, I've definitely gone a bit more colourful lately, especially when it comes to art and working in this book. I've sort of, it's it's it, I was gonna keep it really, really, really old looking, you see, and to me that doesn't scream add loads of random colour to it, but. No, in the end, I've just decided to make it really colourful and stand out. And that's the joy of working in your Book of Shadows, because it can be anything that you wish it to be. Anything you dream it to be, you can do. And I think I said this last time, you, like, you don't have to do your own fancy artwork if you don't want to. It can literally be a notebook of just writing. Like if you're not an artist or you you don't like you just cannot draw or you you hate your drawing so much that you can't bear to look at it. I know the feeling. I get that sometimes. Like just write in like a notebook literally or keep a folder. That's also a really good thing. Like literally a folder and then just print out like stuff that you find online. Just other people's stuff and use that. Because again, like I emphasise, don't then go and say it's all your own stuff. Like when I copy things, I try to say that I've copied it and that it's not my own. But there are a few things I do which are my own. And if they are, I will tell you. But I say, you know, I say, in this case, steal. In this case, steal. You have my permission to steal things for your Book of Shadows. <laughs> this is very, very close to the end now, I think. Please, microphone, please last until the very end and don't break on me, please. Give me this. So the last thing I did is I got some keywords words that make me think about Samhain. So I put magic, death, spirits, darkness, uh, bonfire, divination. Yeah, just all, all the different keywords that I think of when I think of this time of year. So it's kind of like a keyword page, just to let me know what it's all about, or let the reader know what it's all about. That random child in the future that I was talking about. <laughs> and then of course, of course, my my silver pen to finish it all off. To highlight, underline those keywords just to make them stand out a little bit. And that, I believe, is the end. <laughs> we got there. We got there. We did it. Ugh. Never again. Never again am I making a video this long. Never. Okay, just a few little touch-ups that I did at the end, because stuff was falling out. Like the gold leaves, one of them fell out, so I had to re-glue it. So I decided to just glue them a bit more firmer down into there because they were falling apart. We don't want that, do we? So yeah, I adore this page right here that I'm working on. That was great. That turned out really, really well. This page, not so much, but, <laughs> but it works. It works. It does the job. It does the job and that's all it needs to do. So here's me putting the page in, and voila! We are done! 
my little ghosty and my skeleton my page telling you all about it keywords a poem a ritual thing that i do got everything that i need on this page and as i said at the very beginning as chaotic as it is it turns out to be very very good and i enjoyed all of it thank you for watching and i will see you whenever i see you